Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Bend the Rules where we talk about JavaScript things in depth. And today we are going to see how REST operators work inside array literals in a lot of depth. So we are going to see roughly two things today. One is how the array literal works, especially when you have missing indexes in between. And the second thing is how the REST operator and the iterable iterator protocol works. So as always, I'll try to bring the best information possible by reading and summarizing things from the ECMAScript specification. So without further ado, let's start with an interesting question about REST operators. This is the question. So try to pause for a minute and try to answer it yourself. We have an old array with some missing indexes. For example, this has nothing in the index equal to 1. And then we get that into a new array using a REST operator. Now I want to check if the new array is missing that same index or not. So we are just basically using has own property with that missing index 1 to see if this will be true or false. So try to guess what will be the value in case of old array and new array. So what was your answer? Let me actually write down the answer. So for the old array this will be false but for the new array this will be true. So in short what that means is that when you create an old array with these missing indexes you create a sparse array, an array with some holes in it. But when you use the REST operator to create a new array it uses the iterator protocol on the old array. Now these iterators give value equal to undefined for these missing indexes. Okay. So what happens is this old array doesn't even have a key for this index but this new array actually has a key called 1 with the value undefined which is why this is the answer you get. So in short your REST operator turns a sparse array into a dense array. Now instead of looking at one of examples like this let's rewind back a little bit and start from the beginning and see how REST operator works in array literals. So let's start with the simplest form of an array literal which is just an empty array you know just an opening and closing brace. How does this work internally? So it will just create a new array of length 0. Okay. So we can do it in the same way and if nothing else is happening within the braces then it will just return this same array. But that's not very interesting and in fact let's just keep an index i equal to 0 for future use. Now if I put some elements within the array that's something like 10 comma 20 these elements will actually get added to this same array. So what I mean is now my i is 0 right so it's just going to do array of 0 equal to 10. So it's going to insert one element into the array right. Now it might seem like arrays are somewhat special here because we are using these keys which are just numbers. But turns out they are not very different from how you set properties on an object. So when we just do array of 0, this internally this number gets converted to a property key. Now in this case property key means that this should get converted to a string. So it will just become this key which is you know this string 0. Okay. That's all this is doing. Right. So it's just do it will just do array i equal to 10. And then again it will just increment the i. And one more thing is that when you write something like this in your code, right, the length of array will get automatically updated to 1. But that doesn't happen internally. So, you know, it is they literally set the value of array.length to this new i, which will be 1 now. So, for each of these elements, they will get appended as a property to the array. Plus, the length of the array will be updated to reflect this new element. Now, what happens if you actually have some empty commas? So, what if you put two commas after 10, right? So, you can also have like optionally space in here or not. But what this means is that when you have comma comma, this basically signifies a empty index or a missing index, okay? So a missing index means that it's not going to set this this index, right? This index is 1. So it's not going to do array of 1 equal to undefined. Instead, it's not going to set any value for that key 1, 
okay what i mean is this let's say you have an array at this point right so normally we would write something like this array dot i equal to some value you know maybe in this case like undefined but this does not happen this does not happen okay this doesn't happen so array doesn't have this key one okay so this key is missing in the array but it will still update the length of the array so it will still do i plus plus and array dot length equal to this i now i plus plus makes it two so array dot length becomes two right so this is how a missing index works it doesn't set any value for that property it doesn't set that property but it still increments the length so that the, for the next one this gets added at you know the next index now let's talk about rest operator in array literals so here you have an array one with some values and then we are doing dot 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 array one and putting it into a new array the easy way of thinking of how this rest operator works is that if you have dot 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 array it takes out all the values out of the array and then you can put it into a new one but how exactly does it work internally so rest operator internally uses the iterable iterator protocol which should be defined on this object now this is an array and arrays already have it defined through their array dot prototype but you could have also defined or used your custom object here which implements the same mechanism so what is this iterable iterator protocol thing let's look at it so here we'll again take the whole array and this array itself is a iterable what is special about the iterables it just has a special method so you can do iterator equal to array one and this is a special method symbol dot iterator so this is the key and this should have a method defined on it and if i call this method it will give me a new iterator okay now this iterator has a dot next method on it so if i call dot next it will give me the next value out of the array so it will start with 10 and this is how it returns it it gives you the value so it is 10 the first element of the array and then it tells you whether it's done giving you all the values so it's done false meaning there are more values left now you can keep calling it like this dot next 20 30 but if i still call it after all the values are given out now it will tell me that done is true and the value here doesn't really matter so this same mechanism can also be implemented on your custom objects and this mechanism like you saw here is also being used on the left hand side when you you know use that within an array literal so let's try to create the array to ourselves using the similar method that we did earlier so array two is now we we'll start from a empty array and then we have to again get this iterator in the same way now to start off with we need an initial iterator value so that we can keep looping through it so let me create that the iterator value is equal to it dot next and while this value is available so while iterate value is not done we can keep looping through it and whatever value we get from here we can define it on this array too right we'll do it in the same way the index is initially zero so i can just do array two of i equal to my iter value dot value okay but remember we also have to increment the index ourselves so we can also do that simply so i can just increment my i and then do array two dot length equal to i now this will give me one loop but the next time i want to get the next value out of the iterator i can do it in the same way i can basically call dot next one more time right so this will now continue till you have new values in the existing array and when it's done your new array will already be populated with the same values now we can actually check if it works or not so we'll paste the same code on the right hand side like this and paste this whole thing and see what will be the value of array 2 now if we check the value of array 2 is the same thing which we had in array 1 it has all the same elements what's also interesting is that 
how does the inbuilt array iterator work when you have a hole in the original array so for example here you have an array where the index equal to one doesn't have any value so it's a missing index and if you actually also look at the array it says empty in that position so what will happen if we try to get the dot next value from that position will it give us undefined will it skip that index or will it give us some kind of a special value you can try doing that dot next initially it's 10 but for the second one it actually does go through that index and it just gives us value is undefined and if you remember how the array literal which is consuming this value right it doesn't know whether that is a missing index or whether it's a actual undefined value so in the new array where we're putting in all the elements so if i just do array 2 equal to dot 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 array 1 in this case and if i try to see the value of array 2 you will see that in this index equal to 1 it's actually not empty but the new array actually has undefined in that position because that is what the inbuilt array iterator returns here is one more interesting thing about the inbuilt iterator so what happens if we try to change the length of the array while trying to take values out of it so here you have an array with only one element 10 and if we try to take the first value it's fine and if we call it again we get done true but now what if i push more values into the array will that give me the new values when i do it.next again well looks like no it still says done true no values so does that mean it works with a static length uh, like when i create the iterator it stores the current length so let's try this out once more so we have again created the array and iterator fresh and now i'll take out the first value it should give me 10 what if i push more elements into the array at this point i'll push two elements array 20 and 30 and now if i call it.next will it still give me these new values or will it say that it's done because the length is already fixed on its side let's see huh it looks like now it is giving me the extra values interesting what if i push it later again cool so if i push one more element 40 now will it still give me that no so it seems like it doesn't work based on a static array length so if i have pushed array uh, values to the array now before this iterator is completed right at this point it was done false so when i push array in elements into it it gave me those new elements in the next call but once it is done right once it's, it says done true so all the elements are iterated over then if I still push any more element into the array uh, those are not returned at all right so the philosophy seems to be that once you say done true you cannot or should not again say that done is false and return more values so that's interesting how does this work internally which brings us to the last part of our video where we'll try to see how the inbuilt iterator works by writing kind of a rough polyfill for it okay so how do you do that now we know that for array to be a iterable it has to provide a method on this special key symbol dot iterator the good way of providing that is adding that method onto the prototype of array cool so we do array dot prototype and the key is symbol dot iterator and then we implement a function now this iterable is supposed to return a iterator every time i call it i get a new iterator object right so I should be just returning some kind of an object when this gets called and this iterator should have a next method like remember if you call the next method you get the next values so cool so this should return an object which should have a method called next cool so this next what does it do like mentally thinking uh, every time we call it it needs to know that okay what is the last index I returned kind of increment it and then return the value from the next index at least like as long as the array is not over somehow we need a way to access the array and the index that i have returned the last time or that i'm going to return the next time cool so if you think about it right when you are implementing a prototype method that this within this method is actually going to be your array okay so that this here is going to be the array itself 
but when you've returned this object and when you are calling dot next on it the this that you have here is not there right it's this object this is object that you are returning so you have to somehow store a reference to this array in this object somehow right so let's say we introduce a property here array where we store the this of the method so this array will now always you know uh, refer back to the array on which this is called cool so we have something to refer back to the array now we need some property so that we know that what is the next index i'm going to return right so we can okay introduce a variable next index and we know like the first time the index that you should return is zero we can initialize it with that it will try to increment it every time so what happens if we call this the simplest thing i can think of is well we can just do return maybe you know like array or well this will be like this dot array and this will be the index this dot next index cool but you should also increment the index so what i can do is i guess store this value somewhere and increment our index after that okay cool so we have this much and what does a next return right if you remember it returns this object right it doesn't turn the value directly it gives you a value now that value will have this value that value key but it also should say done true or done false so okay initially done is false now we need to figure out some way so that we know when it is done right we we need to do some kind of a checking with the length so okay i, I guess we can do that so if my next index is like less than my length then it should be good so this dot array dot length cool so if that is the case we are okay with returning these values what else what will happen if uh, we have crossed over the length right what we have what if um, we have finished iterating over the whole array so we need some else section where it's quite simple i can just say done is true and my value doesn't matter so i can just say undefined right this looks good enough um so i have a reference to my array my index and my next method uh this next method every time it tries to check if the index is within the length then it returns that value and also increments the index uh, but if it is like equal to length or greater than length then it will always give me done true and you know no value and it will also not increment the index because there is no need for that but this solves one thing one of the gotchas that we saw right what if you have a missing index remember if you have a hole in between this already kind of solves it right because if we dumbly just increment the index every time and if you try to do this dot array and let's say you get a key like one which doesn't exist on the array this will anyway give you undefined for the missing indexes we are already returning undefined but what about the second edge case which is that once we have crossed the whole array when you have finished iterating over the whole array even if you still increase the length it should not return new values right that is still not yet solved see because let's say my index at some point is three the our like index is two and this my array is length is three so it should return something make it three but next time it will say okay done is true but if i still increment the length after that it will again go into this condition right it will again keep returning value so we need some way of knowing that once this iteration thing is complete we should not return anything so let's do this when we reach here when we know that we're going to return done true let's set our this dot array to undefined okay so that's just a way of saying that my this dot array i don't want to you know check my array anymore right uh, and this should not also give me any kind of an error here so let's add a special condition at the top where if my this dot array is undefined right so that should be the case when i'm calling next even after done is true then don't even care just return this done true thing right so this will ensure that once i have gone into this part i'll never again go into this part because when i go in here 
my array becomes undefined and so it will just get caught by this initial thing so that's exactly how the inbuilt array iterator works i think this is a decent enough polyfill which will take care of a lot of edge cases so thank you for watching this video hope you liked this bit about you know arrays and uh, array iterators and how array literals work maybe we'll talk about object and object literals and how rest works there in the next video so thanks a lot for watching this and i'll see you guys again next time bye bye